Hello, um, I'm Angie. I'd look, like to talk about machine learning and the impact that I see that having on paid search. And the main reason why I want to talk about that today is because I hear this sentiment a lot. So who's heard this in the room today, that machine learning is going to make marketeers and agencies redundant? Pretty much everyone. Good, that's a relief. Um, I feel like I hear this a lot at the moment. I don't think it's anything new either. I feel like I've heard it all through my life, that in 15 years, the machines are going to replace us. Um, in 15 years, the machines will make us redundant. I've definitely heard it for more than 15 years, and I'm definitely not redundant yet. So I thought I was quite safe. I was feeling quite confident. But the more you look into it, the more you read about it, the more you start to understand it, the more this statement can start to ring alarmingly true, alarmingly quickly. And the reason for that is because it's already such a big part of our everyday lives. So it's the mechanism behind pretty much every dating app that you use, if anyone uses dating apps. Um, it's the mechanism behind all the recommendation algorithms, such as Spotify or Amazon or Netflix, which is almost always right. It gives me all the grisly true crime documentaries that I love. Um, and of course, the giants such as Google and Facebook use it immensely across their proposition. And the reason for that is that it really goes beyond that direct marketing as well. So this is a brilliant example. It's not my case study, it's Google's case study. But I'm stealing it because I think it's a really good one. Um, and this is an example from Ocado, where Ocado have an email customer service system and previously they had a sort of first in, first out policy when it comes to responding to emails. But the challenge there is that we all know that some emails are much more urgent than others. So someone emailing to say, can I change my delivery slot, is a lot more urgent and needs a much faster response than someone emailing to say, my driver was really friendly. Nice as that is to hear. So what Ocado are now doing is that they're using the Google Cloud to automate reading the emails, assessing the sentiment, labeling and prioritizing them accordingly. And because of that, Ocado have driven a 4% faster response rate to urgent emails and quite an impressive ROI on a fairly minimal spend. So the reason that I love this is I think it's a really powerful example of using machine learning for, or a brand using machine learning to really help their customers in the moments that they need that help and to really drive towards the customer goal on that one as well. And when we think about machine learning, people tend to go down, I guess, one of three routes. One route is general automation and improvement, which I'll talk through in more detail. And the other two routes are really voice search and image search. So I wanted to touch on those quickly as well. So thinking about voice search, um, we are seeing voice search starting to change the landscape and starting to have an impact. Um, and if you don't think that it is having an impact at all, it might interest you to know um, that there are reports that the highest searched voice search towards the start of the year was I love you. Um, which particularly on Alexa was followed quite closely by Will You Marry Me? And I really can't decide if I think that's sweet or creepy. Possibly somewhere in the middle. Um, but what I think is more tangible for us as marketeers is that by 2020, we're now predicting that around 50% um, of search will be voice. So it's not very far away. It's only a couple of years. And the reason that we think that's going to happen is because we're now seeing that there are 8 billion connected devices in the world, which, to put that into context, is more than the number of people on the planet. So they're pretty ubiquitous. Um, and around 10% of UK households have at least one smart speaker. Now, I swore that I would never have a smart speaker in my house. I said they're the work of the devil. I'm not touching them. I don't like them. I've got to. And I live on my own, and I use them every single day. So they are becoming much, much more prevalent. And the impact that we see from that is that actually com that queries are becoming much, more, much longer, they're much more conversational, they're much more informational-based as well. And actually, interestingly, that gives us much more insight into the user intent as well, because they're asking questions. They're asking how, where, when, why. So we actually understand what people are looking to get when they come to our sites as well. And that means that we have a better contextual understanding, but we need to focus much more on that contextual understanding. 
And that's why around 24% of advertisers cite search um, as a priority for this year or cite voice search as a priority for this year. So if we're not thinking about it next year, then we might be starting to fall a little bit behind. Moving on to image search. Image search is um, much talked about as well. This is an example. Um, again, it's from Google. I've stolen all of Google's case studies now. Um, but this is an example of using machine learning to instantly tell the difference between apples and owls and bread rolls and shibus. Um, perhaps not terribly useful in itself, but the technology is certainly useful. Um, and I have to admit, looking at these, some of them I had to look at twice. And there's a couple of them that I'm still not entirely sure of, and I think I've cut them off, because I don't know. Um, but a machine won't have that struggle. A machine, once it's learned the difference, will be able to identify it in the blink of an eye. And I think that's where you start to see the opportunities. And that's why it goes beyond Google as well. So Pinterest is seeing about 140% increase year on year on searches for visual lens. And I think the, the implications for retailers there are, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, and I'm sure everyone's seen um, the videos around driverless cars becoming more of a reality and seen sort of the quizzes around how they make their decisions. And if you haven't, then go and look it up because it's quite entertaining. Um, but for me, what all of this really means is that machine learning is a culmination of a clear societal change, certainly in terms of how we use our technology. And the last one that I remember in my lifetime is really um, the invention, well, not the invention of the internet, but the internet becoming widely available and us all having it in our homes. And I remember my dad getting, I remember when we got the internet, dad came home, he said, we've got the internet and we're all gonna dial up and he showed us how to dial up. And we had to hear that terrible dial up tone that no one wants to hear anymore. And no one could go on the phone either. And the interesting thing in those days was we all talked about, I'm gonna go online. Oh, I'm going online tonight. Or I need to go online and look that up. And I haven't heard anyone say that phrase for years. And the reason for that is that we don't go online anymore. We live online. I'm pretty sure everyone in this room is going to have a smartphone in their pocket or about their person somewhere. I won't ask you to put your hand up if you don't, but, you know, get one. Um, <laughs> everyone expects to be constantly connected to the internet. We expect it to be always available, always meeting our needs and helping us meet those needs in the moments that we have them. And there's actually around 30% or slightly more of consumers that expect brands and the internet to, con to predict their needs before they have them and already answer them, which might be a bit of a challenging ask, but is a sign of the times that we live in. The good news, though, as marketeers and as brands, is that this creates vast amounts of data for us to work from. So we know what browser people are using to come to our sites. We know what device they're on. We know whether it's the newest one in the range or if it's an older version. We know where they are. We know what they're interested in. We know what their purchase history looks like. Obviously not on a personally identifiable level. That would be illegal. Um, but in general, we do know a lot about our consumers because of the amount of data produced. And a recent study cited that 2.5 exabytes of data are produced every single day. Does anyone in this room know what an exabyte is? Good, because I read that and I had no idea, and I'm glad no one else does. Um, but I have been informed, quite reliably, that it's the equivalent of about 530 million songs. Now... I don't think I can differentiate between 530 million songs, let alone use that information to know whether someone was more or less likely to buy from me, or what ad copy I should serve them, or what landing page I should drive them to. But a machine can, and a machine can understand that in seconds and use that information to help you improve your accounts. And that is when, for me, it becomes really, really exciting. And that's why not just Google, but Google and the other giants are using machine learning uh, or seeing it as a core transformative way to rethink how and what they're doing. Now, I love this quote, and I love this quote for two reasons. The first is serious, the second is not quite so serious. Firstly, I love this quote because I think any industry that has something that is transformational 
and at its core it means that whilst that industry might change, whilst the opportunities might change, it's not going away. That industry is still very much there and thriving and it's nothing to be scared of, it's something to be excited about. The other reason why I love this quote is because I've been working in search for eight years and for every single year I've had Google tell me it's the year of mobile. It's the year of mobile and I'm thrilled that it's no longer the year of mobile. It's finally the year of something else and that something else is machine learning. And for us as brands, that means we need to understand how to use this to add real value to our customers' lives. So there's two kind of views of what the future can look like. One is this horrible dystopian future where you're just getting bombarded by sort of low interest, low impact noise all the time. And the other is a much more utopian view where you're using sort of high impact, high interest messaging at the right time to really tap into people's passions and really helping people to meet those passions and meet those needs. And that's the area where we want to be focusing on. And in order to do that, as brands, it means we need to understand how, why, and when our consumers are interacting with us and what they want out of that interaction and that engagement. And that really means that we need to understand the user interactions beyond that direct path to purchase or beyond that direct path to conversion as well and understand why people are coming to us. And that means that we can then focus on really building that brand trust and that reliance on you as a brand to be able to meet whatever need it is that the customer is coming to you for. Now, to be able to do that properly, the interesting thing is that whilst machine learning will undoubtedly help you cut up the data and cut up the patterns and react in the moment, you still need a human instinct to really tap into passion. You need a human to understand what you get out of passion and how you can meet those needs and what can aid you along that path as well. So it means that your people are much more focused on the strategy and the growth and how we develop those needs as well. Does that make sense? Excellent. I was like a nod while I'm presenting. Um, and the good news is that this is nothing new because we've actually been using machine learning for years in paid search. The, uh, the first iteration was quality score, which came into play back in about 2008. So it's nothing new, but it has undeniably grown exponentially over the past few years. And we use this every day. So we use bid strategies to automatically adjust our bids to a particular target or optimize to a particular target rather than individual CPC changes. We take remarketing lists and model out lookalikes to find people with similar interests and behaviors as your consumers. Um, we use dynamic search ads to automatically insert ads into relevant searches that we're not bidding on. And there's a whole array of optimized rotations and settings that we can use as well. And the reason that we can rely much more on this now is kind of twofold. Firstly, we've got really good models now that look beyond this simple if this then that functionality and teach themselves to meet a particular goal and do that very reliably as well as long as you set your goal properly. Um, and the second one is that we've got much more and much better computation available to us as well. So we can reliably process vast amounts of data in real time and take billions of parameters into account. So where do I think this is going? What do I think is on the horizon for us? I don't think it will be particularly surprising or probably not very interesting for me to tell you that I think there's going to be a continual evolution and a continual growth in that we'll see greater analytical insights coming through. We're going to keep seeing greater and faster um, expansion opportunities and there'll be continued innovation around bid and budget strategies because we see tons of that in the space and that isn't going to go away. But for me, I think there's these three core pillars that as advertisers we can all be focusing on to really help drive our strategies forward. And the good news here is that the three pillars all work really well together and they're all very much part of the same thing. Um, and they also need a combination of machine learning and people to really capitalize on these moments. And I'll start with audience. I do feel that we are moving into a much more audience centric approach at the moment. And the reason for that is really because our customers expect it. So whether you're talking about content that you're serving someone, or whether it's an ad that they're seeing when they search for you on Google, or whether it's the landing page that they land on when they come to your site, 
Your customers expect you to know how they've engaged with you before. They expect you to understand where you are on their journey and they expect you to tailor the experience to that person. And that's why brands are starting to move much more towards a personalized approach as well. And I think that sort of thinking moves as much more towards an audience first in keyword or even channel second world. And the great thing there is that once you're moving towards that view, you then need to be much more integrated across your channels as well. So we can't really be looking at this is what my paid search is doing and this is what my organic search is doing anymore. We need to be having that much more holistic view to understand all touch points in that journey and how they're working together. And to do that properly, it means aligning your goals, your budgets and your targets across the channels. Doesn't mean they all need to be the same. Um, but it does mean that they need to be working together and not against each other towards a common goal. And um, to do that properly, we need to have really good attribution models in place to understand the value of each touch point. I think attribution is much talked about, so I won't spend much time on it. But all I will say is that it needs to be all the buzzwords that you hear every day. So it needs to be in real time, it needs to be cross device, it needs to be cross channel, it needs to take the full funnel into account, it needs to be data driven and not assigning an arbitrary value to a particular point in the path anymore. Um, but above all for me, it needs to be actionable. There's no point in having an all singing or dancing attribution model if we can't do anything off the back of it. And the beauty here is really that machine learning will cut, collate and react to the data in the blink of an eye. Um, and it means that as marketeers, we can focus much more on that growth picture on how we integrate those channels um, and ultimately what it means for our businesses. So what do you do with this? I've just spent the last nearly 20 minutes talking about machine learning, but where do you take this information? So I wanted to leave you with a few key questions um, that brands can be asking themselves. So the first one is, are you keeping up with what your customers want? The first question is actually, do you know what your customers want? And are you keeping up with how that changes? And are you responding to their needs in the way in which they want you to? And I think if most brands are honest with themselves, they'll find that there are some gaps and there are some areas that we can improve on, but that's okay. Because the third question, unsurprisingly, is how can you use machine learning to help you fill those gaps? And how can you use machine learning to help you keep doing what you're doing, but do it better and do it faster? And once you've understood that and worked that bit out, you will probably find that you can save yourself some time as well. So the fourth question really is what do you do with that time? Because no one's at the end point, no one's achieved everything we wanted to achieve. So how do you then invest that time? How do you diversify? Or how do you go out and offer something that your competitors don't? Or how do you simply find more moments that matter for your customers and understand how you can really tap into those moments and capitalize on it? And once you've understood that bit, you can then start to think about the skills and staff that you'll need over the next two, five, or even 10 years in order to deliver on those needs. And I'll, I'll finish with a, a final analogy. It's not my own analogy. Lots of people have used this, but again, it's a good one, so I'm stealing that too. Um, and that is that the changes around machine learning does feel very much akin to the Industrial Revolution. And that un undeniably, people did lose the dangerous, time-consuming manual labor in factories, but what happened was that didn't mean that no one had jobs anymore. It meant that jobs and careers and opportunities were created that had never been imagined before. And there were whole new career paths. And I think that's what we find will, will prove true with machine learning. So in sum, I hope that this will be fairly obvious by now, um, but I think machine learning changes our focus, but not our value. I think machine learning is great for providing the tools for much better reporting and insights and for much greater audience targeting and ultimately takes that manual time consuming manual labor offers as well and means that we as marketeers can be focusing much more on the strategic piece, how we integrate our channels, how we find those moments that matter and how we capitalize on all the available tactics available for growth. And that is really everything from me. Thank you so much for listening.